Sharma, Assistant Professor EC Department. Today, I am going to start with the topic that is vocoders, uh, that is lecture number 10 for the subject wireless and mobile communication. So, these are the topic of today's lecture that is theory of vocoders, we will going to discuss what is actu actually vocoder is. Vocoder is in short it is known as voice coding system or, or a voice coding uh, hardware equipment that has been designed to process the speech signal, whatever uh, we are saying that is a 1 D signal, 1 dimensional signal a speech signal and we want to uh, do some processing on that speech signal to process the voice. Uh, 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 signal that we are uh, speaking. Uh, uh, this is done actually for any research from the research point of view or for any other uh, designing. We require to process the speech signal to find out the characters that uh, find out the various parameters from that particular speech signal. So, for that particular uh, thing a voice coding technique has been designed that is known as vocoder. Different types of vocoders are uh, we are going to discuss then uh, we will discuss this channel estimation and equalization technique that is also a part of voice coding technique to equalize the effect of noise on the uh, processed signal. Now, this is the introduction of vocoder. What is vocoder actually is? It is an audio processor that is used to transmit speech or voice signal in the form of digital data, so, uh, which means that we require an ADC converter and analog to digital converter to convert the analog or speech signal into the digital data. Like you can see in this particular image that this is a human, uh, the speech signal which is a 1D signal, this is a 1D signal, continuous time signal 1D and it has to be processed, it has to be uh, saved in the form of this uh, digital bits of information that is in the form of 1s and 0. So, that is a kind of vocoder. Now, the vocoder is used as short form, it is known as voice coder. These are basically used for digital coding of, of speech and voice simulation. The bitrate for this available uh, narrow band vocoders is in the form of 1.2 to 64 kbps. So, that is the bitrate uh, which means number of bits transmitted per second that we uh, are using to process the digital data. Uh, which is been converted from the analog data, analog to digital converter. Now, vocoder operates on the principle of formants. Formants are basically the meaningful components of a speech that is generated due to the human voice. So, formants are basically the small segments that we are going to process because since uh, this voice signal, 1D signal is a continuous time signal, it is continuous varying signal and we want to do some processing on it. So, we have to consider a very short duration signal and we consider it as a stationary signal. So, on that particular stationary signal, we are going to do some processing, we are going to calculate some uh, parameters corresponding to that particular signal. Now, whenever a speech signal is transmitted, it is not needed to transmit the precise waveform. We can simply transmit the information by which one can reconstruct that particular waveform. So, this will be reconstruct, this is a reconstructed waveform at the receiver must be similar and not identical to the waveform which has been actually transmitted. So, that is a concept of vocoder. Now, vocoders works, uh, works in such a way that it first uh, captures the characteristic element of the signal, then other audio signals are affected by the use of that characteristic signal. Now, vocoders are basically used for voice synthesis means it is a kind of analysis and synthesis model means analysis is done at the transmitter side and synthesis is done at the receiver side on the uh, recorded signal. Now, the vocoder takes two signals and creates a third signal using the spectral information of the uh, two input signal. It aims to emblem the amplitude and frequency characteristic of the speech signal. Now, this, uh, this is basically a model of vocoder that we are going to study. So, there are two types of sound signals. First one is the voiced signal, another is the unvoiced signal. Now, voice signal is nothing, it is a signal uh, which is being generated by the impulse generator, it does not contain any noise and it is uh, generated from 
some of the uh, words that we are going to uh, say from the vibration of the vocal cord. So, that is known as voiced sounds. Another is the unvoiced sounds that are generated by this noise generator. Now, on this particular impulse generator, we are applying this frequency control signal. So, uh, at the output of this, there is a filter that will going to select either the voiced data or the unvoiced sound and then a synthesized speech waveform will be generated. So, that is a model of vocoder that is a basic human speech processing system. Now, this is the human uh, speech pro production system that is uh, been uh, some of the parameters related to this uh, human uh, speech processing system are mentioned over here. So, the speech is produced from a filtering operation that is formed by the larynx, pharynx, oral and nasal cavity. The sound channels is a physiological filter uh, which shapes the stimulus from the lungs. Different sounds are formed by changing the filtering characteristics. Now, the voice sounds forming the uh, starts from the lungs, midriff muscles press the lungs and causes over the pressure to the trachea. Then the vocal cords start to vibrate at the frequency that is called as a fundamental frequency. Now, this frequency of vibration is about 100 to 110 hertz of male for the male and 200 hertz for the female. So, the main difference between the voiced and unvoiced data is that voiced sounds have great amplitude than the unvoiced sounds and they are formed in narrow or closed part of the sound channel. So, this is basically the diagram which is showing uh, the human uh, book, uh, human speech processing system, how the speech signal will be processed by, uh, will be generated by the vibration of the vocal cords. Now, you can see that this is a nasal cavity, this is just a, uh, you can see a, biolog a biological diagram of a human uh, mouth. Uh, from uh, which is showing the different parts of the mouth that is trachea, then lungs, glottis with vocal cords, tongue will uh, is shown here. So, this is the just a uh, uh, diagram. Now, this is the main diagram that is a, a speech production system. Now, first is the human speech production modeling, second one is the equivalent synthetic uh, speech production block. This is the main model that I have shown you in the first figure, where this is the sound pressure means a uh, speech signal will be generated, which will be uh, differentiated in terms of voiced data and the unvoiced data means voiced excitation and unvoiced excitation. And then the vocal cords with the vibration of this vocal cord, cord this voiced and unvoiced data will be generated. Now, here is a quasi periodic excitation signal and there is a noise like excitation signal, which has been uh, generated over here. The output of this is a articulation uh, filter is being used and then a speech signal will be produced, which is a combination of voiced and unvoiced data. Now, this is the equivalent diagram that is a, a equivalent synthetic speech production model. Now, here is a energy that is an energy value signal is applied over here. Now, here is a tone generator, there is a uh, noise generator which means it will going to produce the voiced data and it will going to produce the unvoiced data and the output of this there will be a variable filter will be used where different filter coefficients we are going to apply so that we can find out the various parameters from that particular uh, uh, system then the speech signal can be heard from the uh, it can be heard from the loudspeaker. Now, next is a voiced model is used to stimulate the voice. So, uh, as the speech contains a sequence of voiced and unvoiced sounds, this is the basis for the operation of a voice model. Now, before proceeding further, it is best uh, better to first understand what is voiced and unvoiced sound. Now, voice sounds are basically the sounds that is generated by the vibration of the vocal cords that I have told you. Then, on the contrary, the sound produced at the pronunciation of the letters that is such as S, P or F, then that is uh, that is not directly uh, related to the vibration of vocal cords. So, that comes under the unvoiced sounds. Now, the unvoiced sounds are generated by expelling air through the lips or teeth. Then voice sounds are simulated by the impulse generator, the frequency of which is equal to the fundamental frequency of vocal cords. The noise source present in the circuit is to stimulate the unvoiced sounds. Then the selected signal is passed through a filter that uh, simulates the effect of mouth 
throat and nasal uh, passage of speaker. Now, the filter unit then filters the input in such a way, so as uh, the required letter is uh, pronounced. So, that is the function behind the speech processing model. Now, this is a voice encoder. Now, voice encoder is nothing, it is a combination of different uh, let us say 15 filters are there, uh, which are bandpass filter means uh, particular speech signal will be passed through a series of filters that is bandpass filter, which has a bandwidth of 200 hertz. Now, you can see that this is the first bandpass filter, which frequency range from 200 to 400 hertz, then another bandpass filter whose frequency uh, frequency range from 400 to 600 hertz, then another will be 3200 to uh, another 3400 hertz. So, that is 3400 hertz. So, if you are going to subtract the highest frequency component uh, from the lowest frequency component, then uh, the difference will be 200 hertz. So, you can say that the bandwidth of the bandpass filter will be 200 hertz. Now, a 15 filters a series of 15 filters parallelly connected are uh, being used. Then after that there will be a rectifier. Now, rectifier is nothing it there are two types of rectifier like the half wave and the full wave rectifier and all these rectifiers are made up of different diodes that is a connection of p n junction. So, these are the rectifiers. So, 15 rectifiers are connected over here. Then the uh, signal will be passed through 15 low pass filters that is again connected in parallel and then after that there will be a DC voltage and at the output there will be an ADC that is analog to digital converter and there is a MUX that has been connected over here and then we are going to uh, see this encoded voice signal. So, that is a voice encoder uh, diagram circuit diagram. Now, this is the explanation of voice encoder the frequency spectrum of the speech signal that will vary from 200 hertz to 3200 hertz is divided into 15 frequency ranges uh, by using 15 BPF that is a bandpass filter each having their bandwidth range of 200 hertz. Now, the output of the bandpass filter will act as an input to the rectifier unit. So, rectifier will we are uh, mostly we are using a bridge rectifier that is made up of four different diodes. Now, here the signal is rectified and filtered so as to produce a DC voltage. This generated the DC voltage is proportional to amplitude of AC signal present at the output of the filter. Now, the input of the frequency discriminator is the speed signal. Frequency discriminator unit is followed by a low pass filter. So, 15 low pass filter are connected in series, then this low pass filter generates a DC voltage that is proportional to the voice frequency. The frequency represents nothing else than the pitch of the voice. So, human pitch uh, uh, male pitch voice and uh, the pitch of the uh, male voice and female voice is different. So, that will be uh, accessed that will be processed by a particular system. Now, thus uh, DC voltage also indicates whether the speech is voiced or unvoiced. So, that is also being presented over here. Now, the output at all the low pass filters is DC voltage which is sampled which is multiplexed and A to D converted. So, we have a digital equivalent of the speech signal at the output of encoder. This encoded voice signal consists of frequency component from 200 hertz to 3200 hertz information regarding the pitch of the speech whether it is voiced or unvoiced. So, whatever signal that we are having whether it is voiced or unvoiced. So, that will be generated using this voice encoder technique. Now, next comes the voice decoder that has been used at the receiver side. Now, you can see that this is an encoded voice signal. Uh, the very input of this encoded voice signal will be a DMUX and a D a C that is a digital to analog converter, because at the transmitter side we are using analog to digital converter and a MUX. So, at the receiver side we are using DMUX and DAC. Now, there is a balance modulator 1 to balance modulator 15 we are using, then there will be a bandpass filter again of the same frequency range, because if we are using the different uh, uh, bandpass filter of different uh, frequency range, then there will be the signal which it will be demodulated is of no use. So, that uh, that is why we are using from 200 hertz to 3200 hertz bandpass filter. At the output of this we are using an adder and a speech output. 
Now, to this there is a decoder is connected and here it is connected to this voiced unvoiced data. There will be a noise generator then a pulse generator and here it is unvoiced and voiced sound. So, th uh, this is what we are having this voiced decoder uh, signal. Now, this is the description of the voice decoder. You can see over here that uh, the digital voice signal generated by the voice encoder is firstly it will be decoded using this Tmux and DAC. It is converted to into uh, analog form again. Then the voice decoder uses uh, using a uh, speech synthesizer produces voice signal at the output. It generally generates an approximate voice signal. Then the digital voice signal generated by the voice encoder is firstly uh, it will be decoded then the voice decoder using a speech synthesizer produces voice signal at its output. So, it generally generates an approximate voice signal. So, whatever voice signal we are using it will be generated by this approximate voice signal. Now, the DMUX and the DSE section convert the received encoded signal back to its uh, analog form. Here a balance modulator filter combination is used uh, in correspondence to the rectifier uh, filter combination at the encoder. Now, the carrier to this BM is either the output of noise generator or the pulse generator, but this depends on the position of the switch. So, whatever uh, position that what uh, whether it is uh, using this voiced data or unvoiced data that we will be uh, will be generated that will be selected by this particular switch. Now, however, the switch position is decided by the decoder it is so because when the voiced signal is received the switch connects the pulse generator output to the input of all the balance modulator. So, at the receiver side 15 balance modulators are connected in uh, parallel these are connected in parallel 15 and then there will be a rectifier and a low pass filter is used the same way as it is connected at the transmitter side. Now, next is different types of speech coders that are available. So, based on the coding technique there are different types of speech coders like first one is the waveform coder, then there will be a voice coder in short it is known as vocoder, there will be a hybrid coder and a analysis by synthesis coder. So, there are different types of four different types of coder techniques are there like waveform coder, voice coder, hybrid, hybrid is a combination of voice coder and waveform coder and then analysis by synthesis means at the transmitter side analysis will be done and at the receiver side synthesis will be done. Now, these are the different uh, these are the explanation of different coders like first one is the waveform coder. So, it will preserve the original shape of the signal waveform better suited for the hybrid bitrate coders that is PCM uh, pulse code modulation and uh, ADPCM that is adaptive uh, delta adaptive differential pulse code modulation that is ADPCM uh, th these are uh, related to this waveform coder. Next is the voice coder that is in short it is known as vocoder. So, a speech signal is assumed to be generated from a model which is controlled by some parameters. So, during encoding parameters of the model are estimated from the input speech signal, then the parameters are transmitted as the encoded bit stream. Then the quality of the decoded speech depends on the uh, model that we are using and the basic example of this voice coder is G.729 vocoder. So, that is a kind of voice coder. Next is the hybrid coder. Now, hybrid coder combine the strength of the waveform coders and vocoders. Additional parameters of the model are optimized such that the decoded speech is as close as possible to the original waveform and it is having the medium bitrate, it is a kind of medium bitrate coder. Now, next is analysis by synthesis coder. So, it is a kind of improved form of vocoder. Synthesized signals are extracted from the given code book structure. So, we are going to find the best perceptual uh, match to the original speech by comparing each synthesized signal to original one with the minimum error. So, basically at the transmitter side we are using the uh, analysis part. So, this is a kind of improved form of vocoders. The synthesis signal, synthesized signals are extracted from a given code book structure. So, whatever code that we are using that whether we are processing the voiced and unvoiced data it is saved uh, and it has to be uh, mapped to a particular code book structure. So, that is a part of this analysis by synthesis coder. 
the example of this analysis by synthesis coder is g.729 aclp then cs aclp speech coder so this is a kind of analysis by synthesis coder next is different types of vocoders like first one is the lpc uh, 10 which is a linear predictive coder that is very famous and very important vocoder next one is the celp that is code excited linear prediction next is melp that is mixed excitation linear prediction and last one is the adaptive differential pulse code modulation so these are the sum of vocoders that we are going to discuss now so this is a very uh, basic kind of speech model now you can see that speech is generated by inhaling air and exhaling it through the glottis and the vocal tract the noise like air from the lungs is modulated and uh, shaped by the vibrations of uh, glottal cord and the resonance of the vocal tract. So, you can see that this is a random source which will going to generate the particular speech signal Now you can see that this is the excitation is nothing, excitation means the input signal that you are applying to a particular kind of filter excitation and response excitation means you are applying a input to a filter and whatever output you are getting it is uh, considered as a response of that particular model now this is a random source at the output of this there will be a continuous time signal which is continuously varying you can see and this will act as an excitation to this glottal or pitch model whose transfer function in the z form is given by pz now this is the this will going to uh, we are going to apply pitch period over here here you can see that the amplitude of this particular signal will be increased and then it is applied to a vocal tract model which is having a transfer function denoted by hz and at the output of this we are having this speech signal now you can see that this is extended in time so you time or you can see in the frequency band uh, this is a very fine uh, signal as compared to this excitation now, the pitch filter model uh, models the vibrations of glottal cords and generates a sequence of quasi periodic excitation pulses for the voiced sound as shown in the figure. The pitch filter is also termed as long term predictor since it models the correlation of each sample with sample as a uh, pitch period away. So, that is a uh, consideration of this particular type of system. Now, next is a linear predictor model forecast the amplitude of a signal at time m x m using a linearly weighted combination of p past samples that is x m minus 1 to x m minus p and it is given by this particular equation that is x cap m is equals to summation k is from 1 to p a k x m minus k. So, where the integer variable m is uh, the discrete time index that is given by this particular formula that is the expected value of this particular system is the prediction of x m and a k is the predictor coefficients. Now, you can see that this is an input signal which is uh, going to generate this particular type of system now this is the z inverse or there will be delay elements that are connected over here now here we are having this uh, a1 so these are the weight functions or you can say the attenuator weight uh, weights are there which are variable in nature the, you can say it is uh, kind of coefficients only and these are varying so that's why we are uh, using this tuning kind of thing so that it will be tuned to get this estimated signal of the uh, original input signal now next is the celp that is a code excited linear prediction uh, model now you can see in this that one of the main principle behind celp is the analysis by synthesis uh, consideration we are going to use this now in this it is based on three ideas like first one is the use of a linear predictive model to model the vocal tract now the use of adaptive and fixed codebook entries are uh, as excitation of the lp model the search produced uh, performed in the closed loop is, is a perceptually weighted domain so you can see that this is a fixed code book which is having the fixed code which is using a kind of line coding then an adaptive code book is there which is variable in nature so this there are two code books are there first one is adaptive in nature another is fixed one then here will be a fixed code book gain will be there there is an adaptive code book gain is there and then there will be a fast subframe that is connected in the feedback path and at the output of this there will be a synthesis filter whose transfer function is given up by 1 upon az now next is the mixed excitation linear prediction model that is denoted by melp 
Now, the uh, MELP vocoder and evolved from the improvements and modifications to another CELP model. So, that is an extension of CELP which is known as LP C 10. The MELP uses mixed excitation model that can produce uh, more natural surrounding uh, sounding speech because uh, it can represent a richer ensemble of uh, uh, possible speech characteristics. MELP encoding is robust in difficult uh, acoustic environments with uh, significant background noise and reverberation such as those uh, frequently encountered in commercial and military communication system. So, this is an explanation of MELP. Uh, now, this is the diagram like this is the pitch and the aperiodic flag which is applied to this inverse TFT. So, here we are using the discrete Fourier transform. Uh, inverse discrete Fourier transform which will uh, produce the again the transmitted signal. Then it is applied to a shaping filter which will going to shape the pulse and remove the noise. Then it is applied to this summation. So, that is an MELP codec or the coder. Last one is the ADPCM. Now, ADPCM is an adaptive differential pulse code modulation. So, it is an extension of PCM and it is an extension of DPCM also, which is adaptive in nature. So, it is very efficient digital coding waveform. The principle of ADPCM is to use our knowledge of signal in the past time to predict in the future. So, basically, whatever we have stored in the uh, previously we have to use it as an feedback and we have to process that particular signal. So, PCM is performed before uh, ADPCM to decrease the number of bits for coding by passing through uh, the PCM process before transforming to ADP ADPCM sample. So, that is the concept of ADPCM. So, in today's lecture we have discussed different uh, types of vocoders. Uh, the vocoders is basically a speech processing model that is an hardware unit. These are the references that you can consider for this particular topic. Thank you.